Hey everyone, it's Kathy and you're back here on my YouTube channel, Kathy's Random Acts of Stamping. I want to thank you so much for tuning in today and if you're new to my channel, welcome in. If you're one of my faithful people that watch me every time that I have a video go up, thank you so much. It means so much to me that you take your time out of your busy day to uh, view what I have to offer. So it's always my desire to bring you uh, beautiful projects um, with simplified instructions so that anybody can do this. I am an independent Stamping Up demonstrator and I'm located here in Gastonia, North Carolina. But if you're currently not working with a demonstrator and you're interested in any of the products that I show, please reach out to me. I would absolutely love to help you with your purchase, but I don't want to take you away from your demonstrator if you are working with someone. So, with all that being said and that out of the way, today we're going to work with this grassy grove. Now I played with this back in January but I didn't bring it to my channel because I made my husband a birthday card and this is what it looked like. Today I want to do it and it looks like the cameras the lighting is kind of washing it out. This is I actually um, blended ink blended my colors so I went from a very bright yellow uh, down into some purples and then blue as though the sun is going down and you know it's starting to get a little darker I want to do something a little different today what I want to do is I want to play with the um, New Horizon paper and I chose this piece because it looks bright and sunny and just got some beautiful colors going on there I also have a piece of Evening Evergreen, and we're going to use that with the dies. These Grove dies uh, coordinate with the Grassy Grove. If you purchase these together and you use the bundle number, you will get 10% off of what they would be if you bought them separately. So if you like the stamps and you love the dies, I would say take advantage of that and always bundle because you will save money. Um, these dies are gorgeous. You can cut the trees out. You have a die to cut this out. Um, dies to cut these trees. You have the uh, large deer. You also have a small fawn. And you have some little um, pieces, some little greenery that is great to tuck around in different places. But the first thing I want to do is I want to cut this little background uh, image or the frame uh, out of this evening evergreen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my little flags to stick that down and I'm going to go ahead and run this through my dye machine. This does have a straight edge on it so I'm going to run it through at an angle. Oops, I bumped my um, my trimmer. I have it laying right in front of my die cut machine. Alrighty. I'm also going to need to decide. Ah, oh, that's so pretty. I'm also going to need to decide what color um, am I going to want to make my card base out of. So let's go ahead and get all of these little pieces out of here. Isn't that so pretty? You know, I have a um, brush that I could brush this with, but I really think these are going to punch out pretty quickly. So let's just do this. Cannot craft without my take your pick tool. It has so many attachments for it, and it's perfect for just about every aspect of your crafting. And that came out absolutely beautiful. Now what I want to do is I want to cut this frame down, and I'm going to use my measurement from this side, and let me clean this up real quick. Oh, see the static? It's really cold here today, so... Um, using the acrylic plate and cardstock, you always get static, especially if it's cold. One thing that you can do to help that is take a dryer sheet. And I wish I'd have thought about that before I uh, came in here. I would have gotten, you know, I might have some dryer sheets. I usually keep some in here.
Mm, plastic bags. I've got everything. Oh, I do have dryer sheets. So this will probably make a world of difference um, on your plates. So just wipe them off with a dryer sheet if they're staticky. Another little tip and tidbit. And I would wipe both sides as well as your cover plate. So both of these acrylic plates because they do get staticky. That will probably help quite a bit. All right. And they smell good. <laughs> so I'm going to turn that over. I'm going to stick this back over here because we're going to be doing more die cutting. So the first thing I want to do is bring my trimmer over. And we are going to take this piece. I'm going to measure. I believe this is going to be about a quarter. Yeah, about a quarter. So I'm going to come over here and it looks like I can take just about a quarter inch off of that and be safe. That is perfect. And now I want to measure this because I want this to be five inches. Oh and it is. Actually we're going to cut it down to four. I think. Let's see. This is going to go on here, something like this. I'm going to cut this down just a hair. You know, if I don't like it, we can cut it again, right? I'm going to cut it at four. And now let's see what that looks like. I think I like it like that. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some pencil marks on my, let's move this out of our way and put this on our grid paper or my mat. What I'm going to do is I'm going to line this up so that it's squared. And again, I'm going to use some of my little sticky notes, flags, just to, to hold that down to my surface because I want to make sure that I'm getting this exactly where I want it. And so here is where you can decide how much of the sky you want to show, how much of the greenery you want to show, and I think I want mine right about, right about here. So what I'm going to do is I know that I'm going to cut it from here, so I'm going to put a line there, one here, one here, one here, and one here. So now when I take this to my trimmer, I'll have an idea of exactly where I need to cut that. So I'm going to line that up right there in my track, and I can feel my track, and that's pretty close. So I'm going to cut, and then I'm going to turn it this way, and I'm going to feel for my track. That's pretty close. And then I'm going to do the same thing with this, I'm lining it up, and slice. And I made sure that I pulled it over enough so that I got the pencil marks off of there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this over top of that, just like that. And this piece I'm going to want to pop up. But before I do any um, putting anything sticky on that, I want to do some stamping on this piece. So the first thing I want to do is I want to stamp. Get my stamp set over here. I think I want to stamp these trees I 
Because remember, this is going to be over top of it. Like that. So these trees could be back in the distance, like right in here. So I'm going to stamp those right there. And since I'm dealing with um, designer series paper, and if you don't want to mess that up, I'm going to go ahead and bring in my Stamparatus. And I'm going to sit this down. Right about there. And we'll put my magnet on it. Oh, these are super strong magnets. And then I'm going to shimmy it down just a little bit and I'm going to lay another magnet right there. Oops. And then I'm going to pick that stamp up. And I'm going to use my stamp set to give me a like a little cushion there. And I want something a little lighter than the um, Evening Evergreen. So what I'm gonna grab is an old olive. I think the old olive, let's see if that's one of the colors in this cardstock. And you can find that by looking on the back of your, uh, yeah, old olive is. Uh, on the back, underneath the name and the size of the designer series paper, you will see all of the coordinating coordinating colors that you can use with this paper. So if you're ever in question, just look at the back of it, and that will give you what you need. So I'm just going to tap, tap, tap my old olive. And I'm going to leave that ink right here just for a moment. And I'm going to give that a press. The good thing about the Stamparatus, you can lift it up. If you don't like it, you can re-ink it and put some more ink, or you can just press on it again. And that is perfect. Isn't that gorgeous right there? So I am going to... I'm going to put a little bit of stamp cleaner on my cloth and wipe this stamp down. Just like that. And we can take that one off and let's see what else we want to do. Do we want to put... Um, about this little gra that grassy area would have been better over there but I think it might be cute down here you know, up close hmm, let's try it and I'm going to do this one in a different color I think that we're going to try this one in Garden Green is one of our greens. Evening Evergreen. Soft Succulent. Let's do the Soft Succulent. That is a very muted type, and I think it will play into that right there. So, love the color coordination. Let me get my stamp and put it back over here. And I love to uh, stamp on uh, my designer series paper. I think it gives you a beautiful effect, especially when you have something like this. I'm going to do this one more time. Beautiful. And we're going to close up both of our inks because I'm done with those. get that cloth and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to clean up that stamp. Just so important to clean your stamps after you use them. I cannot stress that enough. Clean stamps are happy stamps. So, and I'm, one, I'm a stickler for making sure that I keep my stamps nice and clean 
and uh, I resell a lot of my stamp sets so whenever I sell them to someone I want them to be in excellent condition so um, when they're retired I discount them and sell them so because with BMD and the demonstrator there's no way I could keep all of the beautiful stamp sets that I have I would not have room for them so look at that when you frame it. Look how beautiful that looks. It's like you've got some trees back there in the back and you've got this little meadow there. Now I want to put um, my deer, you know, inside of that. So I'm gonna, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some of my uh, strips. Let me take out my adhesive strips. I love these. They are so great. Stampin' Up sells these foam adhesive strips. They're very um, narrow. They're like, I would say probably an eighth of an inch. Um, doesn't say, but that's what I would say. I'd say they're probably about an eighth of an inch. And they're just like our, um, our dimensionals, but they're in strips like this. And they work perfect for framing any type of card. And what's so great is you can put this down and I am going to make sure that I'm getting it all the way across as even as I can. Just like that. And then I'm going to snip. And then I'm going to come down on this side and see why I wanted to keep at least a quarter of an inch on, on there. I just wanted to have enough where I could put a strip of this without um, it showing. And that worked out really good. So I'm going to snip this off. And I might take this little one and put it right here just to give me a little bit of stability there. And if I have another little piece, I might do the same thing. Uh, there's also a piece here at the top that we can snip off. So let's put, oh, my backer came off of that one. That's okay. We're gonna put this one down right here. And I'll turn it over and make sure that I don't see any of my phone strips and so far so good. So I am going to grab one more and we're going to do the same thing over on this side. These um, adhesive strips are great for shaker cards. Absolutely wonderful. If you are into making shakers, I would highly recommend uh, picking up some of these strips because they're great for that. There we go. So we're coming along now, and we're going to run this one right down here. And all the only waste I'm going to have, and really it's not going to be a waste because I'm going to use it. We're going to put one right here, and I'm going to use this little strip right here, and I'm just going to snip that off. And we're going to use that across the top, right about here. There. So now that piece is ready to go down. And see when you lift it up, you get that dimension. I don't know if y'all can see that on the camera, but it is so pretty. Absolutely loving this. Okay. So the next thing I want to do is I need a card base so I'm going to go over here into my card bases and I might pick this soft succulent I don't think it's going to matter because this is going to kind of cover the card well, a little bit of the card is going to poke out I think the soft succulent will be a good choice but I want to do my deer so I'm going to grab a scrap of white
there's my scrap of white. I also had some white right here. Let's do this one. Um, I'm going to grab my larger deer. And I want to decide what color. I think I'm going to go with the soft suede. I'm going to just grab a stamp block. And we're going to pick him up and ink him. Okay. And we're going to stamp him. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So I'm gonna clean my stamp really quick. We're gonna grab the die that go, that will cut him out. And that is this one right here. And hold that. Use one of my little flags and we'll run him through. Yeah, and he just fell right out, which is great. So now let's put this one up and I'm going to grab my crumb cake and we're going to grab the nope I don't need crumb cake I'm sorry I need a little piece of crumb cake paper a little crumb cake paper so let's find a scrap I love it since I organized my scraps because it makes it so easy for me just to reach and grab a color that I need. Probably one of the best things that I did in my craft room. And this is the little deer that's looking back. And he's smaller. So we're going to run him through the, the die cut machine. Love it. All right. So I'm going to lay my die back over here as well as that one. Bring my scraps up here for now. And let's look at how we want to do these. I think this one I want it to be a smaller deer. So I'm going to put some white dots on him just to make him look like you know a little smaller deer a little white tail then we'll grab my black pen and we are going to give him a little bit of a black nose and an eye. I think I'm going to go here and here. And then I'm going to go back with my white pen. Like, oops, like that. And I think I want to do the black on the tips of his feet. And I'm just doing this with a pen. You know, it's all in the detail. 
So just like that, and look how that makes him pop. Totally different than what it looked like when I first cut it out. Okay, so let's bring this back over. And let's decide how we want to do this. Do I want this one popped up inside? I think I do. So I'm going to put a dimensional on the back of this one. Let's grab some minis for his legs. If I can find a pack of minis up here, and I know I got some. <laughs> There's some minis. So I'm going to take my take your pick tool because these are so tiny. Sometimes they're very hard to manipulate. But I love them because they do give me um, just the right size of so many times. Now if you don't have these, you can cut your bigger ones down. there. And then we are going to, I want to line everything up. Tell you what, let's go ahead and start gluing some stuff down before we put these on. I'm going to use some liquid glue and I'm going to put glue on the back of this just like this. Make sure you do it the right side. You know what, this card base has a little bit of a flaw right there, so I'm going to actually use this side since I'm going to be covering it. And get that down just like I need it. And press. Oops, it moved on me. Did y'all see that? <laughs> Let's try that one more time. No, 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 no not cooperating. Let's try this again. I'm going to get a wipe because I've got glue all over my fingers. And I'm going to grab my um, Then folder, and I'm just going to spread that glue out. And then I want to take these pieces off, cover my glue up. <coughs> yes, I still have that nagging cough, y'all. It has not gone anywhere. So <laughs> it is just one of those things that kind of hangs on. And sometimes in the morning, I find myself very congested um, but it is still so much better than what it was at least I'm not sick running a fever now so for that I am so thankful and I know with bronchitis and a sinus infection those cold those coughs just hang on forever because you got that combination of that you know that cough in your bronchial tubes and then you also have that little tickling cough from your sinuses draining so when you couple the two together, let's just face facts, you're going to cough. So, uh, that piece is already off, so I'm going to grab this piece and pull it off. And I think we got all of our little sticky pieces are ready to go down. So, this you want to be 
let's see, we want to put him down first, but I want to find out exactly where I want to put him before I commit. You know what, I think we can still stick him in there. So let's, let's go ahead and get this piece centered over top of this piece of designer series paper. And if my head gets in the camera, I apologize, but I want to get this, let me try it like this. Perfecto. Oh, I got a little showing down here, so that's okay. It, that's not going to bother me a bit. So we're going to take our little deer, and I'm going to nestle him like he's behind that tree, just like that. And I want this one to look like he's in front of the trees looking back. Isn't that so cute? And this one, I think I'm just going to put glue um, you know, I got glue on everything, including me and my mat. <laughs> and I'm looking at the legs on my my little deer and I don't think I got quite enough of white marks on him. I want just a few running down his legs. Just like that. And I think I want glue in the middle of his body. Maybe we'll just do it right here. So afraid the glue's going to take off out of there like crazy. <laughs> Let's put just a dot. There we go. And then a little bit here. And maybe a little bit right there. And then I'm going to sit him down into that glue. Just like that. Oh, I love the dimension on this card. Isn't that pretty? So, so pretty. Okay, so now we need a sentiment. And we need to decide what kind of card we want this to be. So, I love this one. Sometimes we need to know that someone really cares. And then it's got here, that someone is me. That would be beautiful on the outside and that for the inside. And I think that's going to be what we're going to do. So I am going to stick that back in there. I didn't use my landscape one. I had played with it, but I decided against it since I used that paper. see if we could find a label um, I wonder if my cloud punch would hold that that would be so pretty on a cloud I don't think it's quite big enough and I think it's going to take away from the front of that so let's try something different. Yeah, I don't know if this timeless label is still current, but what I would suggest to do is find a, a punch that will accommodate your um, sentiment. So I'm going to use this one. This is an older Stamping Up Punch, and I need some soft succulent. So let me find a scrap. I 
I love it when I can use scraps. Very, very good. And then I'm going to use the um, put the wrong caps on the wrong pins. Okay, I'm going to use my Evening Evergreen. Just stamp that on that label. Let's see what that label's going to look like on our card before we get started. Is that going to take away from my trees? Hmm. You know what I might do? Yes, I'm taking this up, y'all. <laughs> and if you breathe on your adhesive, You can sometimes get it up without tearing your paper. And sometimes you can't. It's more apt to tear your cardstock than your designer series paper. But you can do it if you work it. This isn't on there straight and it's driving me crazy. So, and that's how you do that. So, I am going to put this back down. And I want to get it centered as best I can. Over top of our designer series paper. Now my adhesive is showing right there, so we're going to pull that down. These little strips that came up, I'm just going to stick them back on. Just like that. And like here. And this did tear the paper just a little bit right there. So I am going to put a little bit of glue over that. Never be afraid to Take it up if you're not pleased with it. Um, it's better to do that than to have a card that you're going to look at and think, oh, I am not giving this to anybody. And I know we've all done that. I got that little paper off of there. So just always remember, we can, we can fix our mistakes. It just takes a little bit of tenacity and determination. I'm just going to put some liquid glue on top of this. And you know what that's going to do? That's going to give me a little wiggle room. It's also going to make this a little stickier. So I better get it in place this time because I won't come back up. <laughs> Alrighty, so let's try this again. Again, we want to go in, making sure that we are right over top of that designer series paper. Just like so. That's much, much better. Now I'm pleased with that. Don't y'all think that looks better? 
All right, so now we need to decide if we're going to put this on the outside or the inside. And I am really, I am really thinking that this is going to go on the inside. So let's cut us a piece of white. And we know that we're going to need this to be, I'm going to go ahead and close this glue up until I'm ready to use it. And this piece needs to be four. piece of, hmm, let's see if I've got a piece of evening evergreen. So I want just a tiny bit of this to poke out, so I'm going to do this at four and one Three eighths. So that'd be one, two, three. And then this hole. This will actually frame on there. Oops. Three eighths. I should have done five eighths. Ah, oh, let's see. Five and a quarter. Let's take this down to five and an eighth. There we go. That's what I want, and I think that will look so pretty framed inside of our soft succulent. So, let's move our trimmer. Let's do our stamping. Okay. And I'm going to grab this block and I'm going to go ahead and pick them both up at the same time. Sometimes I feel like I need to do that on the Stamparatus, but I'm going to go for it. Evening Evergreen, and we're going to tap, tap, tap. And I might not be quite so brave, so let's take this little piece and stamp it first. I'm going to line that up so you make sure I got my stamp straight. Yeah, I'm glad I re-inked it or stamped it first because it needs a little bit more. Yep, I like that. So stamp, 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 tap, tap, tap. And line this up. And I'm going to go up to the top just a little bit so it gives me room for my signature. Real shaky this morning, y'all. Might be that cup of coffee. That is so pretty. I love that little font. Okay, 
now we are ready to put this on here. So I'm going to use my liquid glue. to the edge to make sure that I have that little edge over on that side and press it down. Then we're going to bring our card back over and then we're going to put the whole thing inside of our card just like that. So again some liquid glue And if you wanted to, you could come back and stamp um, the trees in the corner. You could stamp the little grassy knoll in the corner or over here. And I think we're going to do that. And I'm going to do it in the soft succulent. But I'm gonna, I'm going full on. I was gonna stamp it off, but I'm gonna go full on. Love it. Isn't that so pretty? So there's our card, and I hope that y'all have enjoyed um, this little tutorial. A lot of information and a lot of die cutting but oh so pretty look at that and then we got this beautiful card on the inside I love this I think it's so pretty you've got so much detail going on with that die these dies are outstanding so if you haven't looked at the stamp set and it is a new one in our um, mini catalog let me pull that catalog and I'll show it to you it is right here on page 47 and it is ab absolutely stunning there's one a card made a different way this is I mean there's just so many things that you can do I love that one with the silhouette that is stunning I may have to I may have to case that one but over here look at that with the trees there's just so much that you can do with this one so if you haven't taken a look at this um, pull your catalog out or you can go on my website and look at the at the catalog if you go to um where it says uh, link for my um to shop i think that's what it says it'll be underneath this video a link to my stamping up website and it, once you click on that you can go midway the page and you can click on the annual catalog or the mini catalog and you can view the catalog as a pdf you can actually blow anything up that you want to so you can see it closer so it's a great resource but if you don't have a catalog and you're interested in ordering from me um or if you have ordered from me and don't have a catalog which you should because i send catalogs out to everybody that orders from me so um take a look you might find something that you will absolutely adore to use in your craft room so thanks again so much for tuning in god bless and keep you and as i always say in closing let everything that you do and say bring glory to our father in heaven he is so worthy of our praise and our honor so until we craft again remember i love you guys so much bye-bye